was born into a middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram in the erstwhile Madras state. My father, Jainal Abdin, had neither much formal education or much wealth. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit. He had an ideal helpmate in my mother, Ashyama. I do not recall the exact number of people she fed every day, but I am quite certain that far more outsiders ate with us than all the members of our own family put together. I was one of many children. A short boy with rather undistinguished looks, born to tall and handsome parents. We lived in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of the 19th century. It was a fairly large puka house made of limestone and brick on the Mox Street in Rameshwaram. My austere father used to avoid all inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for in terms of food, medicine or clothes. In fact, I would say mine was a very secure childhood, both materially and emotionally. The Second World War broke out in 1939, when I was 8 years old. For reasons I have never been able to understand, a sudden demand for tamarind seeds erupted in the market. I used to collect the seeds and sell them to a provision shop on Moe Street. A day's collection would fetch me princely sum of one anna. My brother-in-law Jalaluddin would tell me stories about the war which I would later attempt to trace in the headlines in Dinamani. Our area being isolated was completely unaffected by the war. But soon India was forced to join the elite forces and something like a state of emergency was declared. The first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt at Rameshwaram station. The newspapers now had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train on the Rameshwaram road between Rameshwaram and Thanishkodi. That forced my cousin Samsudin, who distributed newspapers in Rameshwaram, to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles and as if naturally I filled the slot. Samsudin helped me earn my first wages. Half a century later, I, I can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my, from my father. From my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sister. I had three close friends in my childhood, Ramanatha Shastri, Aravindan and Shiva Prakashan. All these boys were from orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. As children, none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing. In fact, Ramanatha Shastri was the son of Pakshi Lakshmana Shastri, the high priest of the Rameshwaram temple. Later, he took over the priesthood of Rameshwaram temple from his father. Aravindan went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims and Shiva Prakashan became a catering contractor for the Southern Railways. During the annual Sri Sita Rama Kalyanam ceremony, our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the Lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond called Ramathirtha, which was near our house. Events from the Ramayana and from the life of the Prophet were the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family. One day when I was in the fifth standard at the Rameshwaram Elementary School, a new teacher came to our class. I used to wear a cap which marked me as a Muslim and I always sat in the front row next to Ramanatha Shastri, who wore the sacred thread. The new teacher could not stomach a Hindu priest's son sitting with a Muslim boy. In accordance with our social ranking, as the new teacher saw it, I was asked to go and sit on the back bench. I felt very sad and so did Ramananda Shastri. He looked utterly downcast I shifted to my seat in the last row. The image of him weeping when I shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me. At school, we went home and told our respective parents about the incident. Lakshmana Shastri summoned the teacher 
and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. He bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and the island. Not only did the teacher regret his behavior, but the strong sense of conviction Lakshmana Shastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher. On the whole, the small society of Rameshwaram was very rigid in terms of the segregation of different social groups. However, my science teacher, Shiva Subramanya Iyer, though an orthodox Brahmin with a very conservative wife, was something of a rebel. He did his best to break social barriers so that people from varying backgrounds could mingle easily. He used to spend hours with me and would say, Kalam, I want you to develop so that you are on par with the highly educated people of the big cities. One day, he invited me to his home for a meal. His wife was horrified at the idea of a Muslim boy being invited to dine in a ritually pure kitchen. He refused to serve me in her kitchen. Shiva Subramanya Iyer was not perturbed nor did he get angry with his wife, but instead served me with his own hands and sat down beside me to eat his meal. His wife watched us from behind the kitchen door. I wondered whether she had observed any difference in the way I ate rice, drank water and cleaned the floor after the meal. When I was leaving his house, Siva Subramani Iyer invited me to join him for dinner again the next weekend. Observing my hesitation, he told me not to get upset, saying, once you decide to change the system, such problems have to be confronted. When I visited his house the next week, Shiva Subramani Iyer's wife took me inside her kitchen and served me food with her own hands. Then the Second World War was over and India's freedom was imminent. Indians will build their own India, declared Gandhiji. The whole country was filled with an unprecedented optimism. I asked my father for permission to leave Rameshwaram and study at the district headquarters in the Ramanathapuram. He told me as if thinking aloud, Abdul, I know you have to go away to grow. Does the seagull not fly across the sun, alone and without a nest? He quoted Khalil Gibran to my hesitant mother. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. APJ Abdul Kalam, an extract from The Wings of Fire.